Hey guys, I just wanted to do a, a quick tip video really. Um, I'm going to be using Enscape as a renderer, but this could be for any rendering engine. Um, apart from maybe Revit Live, because Revit Live does this really, really well. But typically if you're doing a walkthrough, uh, unless it's powered by Stingray like in Revit Live, um, we have issues when it comes to doors. And this is a really simple fix that I, I know that many of you will already be using. But uh, for those of you that aren't, or those of you that are new to uh, to Enscape or rendering, I just thought I'd share it. So I'm just putting together a really dumb example, just a quick example file, just to show you that it's uh, all built from scratch. Simple wall, um, I'm just going to throw a door in there, a couple of windows, nothing too overly complicated. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just start up, um, we'll start up Enscape. Maybe let's just get that wall a little bit a little bit lower there. Let's just launch Enscape. I've got all my settings low so I can get it full screen. It's a little bit slow on my laptop because um, I'm running the uh, the beta version. It's got the um, the grass and it's constantly trying to give you the best quality. But uh, here we are in a render. If I put it in walk mode. Um, typically we come up to the door and the door does not open. So we literally have to walk physically through the door. Um, to be able to get into that room or that building, which is fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but certainly from my perspective, if you're showing this off to uh, a client or um, a customer, it's it's not the nicest thing in the world from a, a visual point of view. Um, and certainly if you've got the VR headset on, it feels very strange coming up to a door and physically walking through it. So how can we get around this? Um, really easily is the answer. Um, and I'd only recommend that you do this for visualizations if you're doing quantities or anything like that it could uh, mess things up but um, for your visualizations and, and to add this in for those purposes it's uh, it's a great little workaround I'm using a default uh, family door here this will work with any door pretty much um, within reason so go ahead and select the door hit edit family um, and this will take you into the family editor and what we want to do is just select the uh, the main door panel itself so the main lump of wood making up the door uh, in my case and the two bits of uh, door furniture the two handles on either side uh, and indeed any other geometry that you've got making up the uh, the swinging section of the door select those and head over into uh, a floor plan on the reference level and go and grab your rotate tool on the modify toolbar uh, place your center rotation uh, stick it where the hinge is in the corner of the door just here Choose as part of that rotate that you want to create a copy, and let's just uh, rotate that around 90 degrees. Now this is obviously going to create a copy, so we now have duplicate um, items in my door. It's not too much a problem as long as you're only using it for visualization purposes. So we have door here and door here. All we're going to do, which is really, really crude, is we are going to, uh, we could put a constraint in here to drive this open or close, but we're just doing it the most simple way that I can think of, and that's going in and creating a couple of parameters. Um, we're just going to put them as type. You can do them as instance as well. Uh, let's create one that's called door open. Let's say it's a yes, no parameter, and it's linked to the visibility group. And then we're going to do the same thing, add another one which is called door closed which is also a yes-no parameter and also added to the visibility group. Again, I'm going to do them as type. You can do them as instant parameters. It works exactly the same, works really nicely. Um, and what I'm going to do is just by default, just turn off door open and hit apply. I'm going to do that for every type. So for this type, door open is turned off. For this type, door open is turned off. And for this last type, door open is turned off. We could, if we want to, go through and create individual copies of each type. So they've got a type for open and a type for closed. I'll show you that as it's a short video anyway. So let's go 1010 times 2110 millimeters open. And we'll just switch these around. Hit apply. And let's go down to the next one and create a copy, which is uh, 810 by 2110. We'll make that one open as well. And apply and then head over to our last one which is uh, just under a meter so 910 by 210 2110 sorry um, millimeters and we'll say that one's open as well now just to confirm that's working if we go into a shaded view when you're switching between those types in the family editor here you won't notice much change 
Okay, so whether you're looking at uh, one that's got it set as open or one that's got it set as closed, you won't notice much change yet because we're not doing anything. So go ahead and grab the, um, the geometry that we just copied. Go over to your properties, grab your visible, hit this little button on the end here to associate a parameter and we'll associate that with door open, hit OK. Do the exact same thing for the original door geometry over here on the right hand side on my screen. Select the two handles and the, um, the door panel itself and change their visible parameter to door closed. Now what you'll see is if you go into your family types and I change this to one of the closed configurations, you can just about make out here that the borders, the edges on this geometry is grey, where the edges on this geometry here is black. Keep your eye on this door just here, keep your eye on the geometry that we have just here. Let's go in and change this to an open door, hit apply, black edges. Change it to a closed door, hit apply, grey edges. We're just going to go through and make sure that all of these are working, flexing our parameters so to speak, testing them to make sure that, that family is going to work the way in which we want it to. And in this case it does. So we're going to load that into the project. I'm not going to save it, but in your instance you might want to do a save as and save that as an openable door. And now we can see we have that door inside of our Revit model. If I grab it and change the type to uh, 1 meter 10 by 200, uh, 2 meters 110, open, that will open the door for us. And instantly in that case, when I go back into Enscape, it just looks so much nicer. It's, it's more inviting to walk into the visualization when you've got that. Um, it shows you that there is a, a room, oops, helps if I'm over the floor before I put it into warp mode, there we go. Um, it just shows, let's just bring the sun around the back here just so we can see, not quite that dark, there we go, um, that we have something there that we can walk through, which is, which is really nice. Pair this with, let's snap over there and over there, pair this with Enscape's truly brilliant ability to work live inside of Revit. Um, I can come back into Revit and I can instantly say, okay, well, I want to uh, close the door. I want to open the door again. You can almost do this while someone's walking through. Even if they're in a VR headset, you can almost show them the way around the building with them navigating using virtual reality and you simply opening doors for them. Um, it's, it's a really nice workflow. It works well um, and it, it just finishes off your... Uh, your um, your renders. Um, it really does. It's a simple fix. It works well. Um, and that's, that's my top tip for the day. Until next time, see you later.